Hello everyone, uh, this is my first attempt at a video for a YouTube channel, uh, just going through my, all my uh, gaming products and things that I collect, everything from uh, video gaming uh, to uh, tabletop board gaming and role playing. Um, I'm just going to start with my uh, vintage computer collection and retro gaming setup area that I've got, and I'm going to start with my Power Macintosh G3 Beige. Um, it's a great little machine uh, running OS 9.2.2, built in memory of 129 megabyte, um, which is pretty good. Nice, nice little machine. Seems to play every kind of older OS game with no real problems. Um, really wonderful color, color sync monitor as well. Then moving on, I have my little Mac Classic. Um, currently no OS for that at the moment. I think I'll try and find a copy of OS 7. Um, and I can use the keyboard from the Power, Power PC um, Macintosh in that one. Um, then moving on to probably the pride of my collection, which is my uh, Amiga 500, um, which has a whopping 512K of RAM. Um, at the moment it's running Workbench 1.3. And I've got the uh, 520 adapter, which runs uh, AV into this. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, plays pretty well as far as I can get it to work so far. A um, couple of things are wrong with it that I need to fix. There's two 5 volt capacitors that I may have blown, um, which I may have to either solder or replace the boards. Or uh, swap around two of the chips to see if that works next. Um, give it a shot. A uh, little sort of cheap controller pad here to work with it. Um, apparently Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis controllers when you plug them in are one of the reasons why the capacitors will blow. Um, so, but this one here is no, like a, a no-name brand for one of those um, AT Games um, rip-off Sega Mega Drive Genesis uh, thing. So when the capacitors are blown, it means that the the mouse won't work or won't read. Uh, so once I replace that, I'll need to get another adapter so it can read Sega controllers if need be, or I'll I'll buy a uh, an actual good classic Amiga joystick for it. Um, great machine. Uh, grew up with it. Just they I mean they're built like tanks uh, and they just keep going and going and going easy to put um, new parts uh, there's a full scene out there where people create uh, uh, new operating systems games uh, add-on parts for the machines as well which I'm going to get into um, you can get a little uh, replacement disk drive um, a, a disk drive emulator which you can plug USB sticks into and run all your games off off that uh, then I've got my PS2. Um, I guess it's getting there in the terms of retro and vintage, the PS2. Growing up with it, it still doesn't feel like it should be, but here we are. Plugged in via component into this. Looks beautiful. Component always looks good with the PlayStation 2. Uh, probably the greatest console ever created, if you ask me. That and maybe the PlayStation. Um, but I have all of them. I have no real allegiance to any of them um, but the PlayStation 2 I just think is it was so important for when it was built you know first with the DVD drive came out before the Xbox although the Xbox is probably more modifiable of course um, absolute classic machine uh, still love picking it up all the time moving on I've got my Windows PC down there uh, and my fantastic multi-scan um, Sony Trinitron monitor. Uh, really love this thing. Great high resolution, beautiful colours. Just fantastic for retro gaming. Fantastic for anything vintage. Um, geez, even even it's even great for some modern stuff if you want, which I'll can sort of point out in a second. Um, running an Intel dual core Pentium, uh, two point eight gigs. Pretty over the top, I think for. Um, uh, you know, retro gaming, but it does the job. You can see I've got Wolfenstein, Doom, 
Monkey Island, Aliens vs Predator 2, that kind of stuff, and I'm not sure if, uh, being that I'm recording in 1080p, um, I'm not sure how many, how, like, how good you'll be able to see a CRT monitor, but I do have a virtual PC with Windows 98, so I can run Windows 98 over the top of it, and it seems to run a fair few games that I've tried so far uh, in DOS, via it, and also Windows 98 with no problems, I, which I'm really stoked about, because I, I didn't really want to have to buy another PC, considering how many I've got, just to, uh, you know, to run uh, Windows, Windows 98 or Windows 95. Windows 98 being, I think, the better operating system, um, just a lot more stable, just stronger, that kind of thing. Um, the classic Microsoft keyboard, Microsoft mouse, um, really lucky with this machine, you know, having USB really helps. Small little USB speaker, uh, nice and out of the way. Good big sound out of it, just despite what it is. Uh, I'm not sure what really brand it is. Something cheap that I got from, um, I think, Office Works or something like that. Um, if you haven't heard of Office Works, if you're from overseas, it's similar to Staples in America. Um, then I've got my almighty, absolutely classic and completely underrated console, the Sega Dreamcast, which. Um, with the adapter, not a, this particular adapter isn't a great VGA adapter, has a bit of problems, but it does connect up to the Sony, uh, and it just looks sick. It's such a cool console. I mean, I, I, it's literally a little PC. I mean, it's um, it just is so great to have something like this in my collection. I've got um, Scum VM, Sam and Max in there at the moment, but I've got a. Um, a disc you can use to play uh, burnt games, NTSC games, you know, Japanese American games, things like that. Um, brings up the resolution to 480p, I think it is, uh, to be able to play on that monitor, and it just looks great on the Sony. Um, little adapter for sound goes into the small USB speaker. Um, just really, really happy with how that works and how this is set up. Um, camera, um, that's kind of on there, but that'll probably just plug up to my actual laptop and my, um, you know, my main computer, which I'll show you later to maybe start doing things like Twitch or whatever I decide to do from here on in with this. Um, there's the tower. It's just some old random tower. I think it cost me $50 Australian for this computer itself, which is uh, damn cheap. Um, so far, no problems. So far, nothing that, I, that I've really had an issue with. Uh, while we're here, we might just have a look at the video card. Of course, running ATI Radian. Um, and it's an X6500. Pretty standard video card, but I, uh, you know, um, does the job for what I need. It'll do most most games sort of up to the early 2000s, things like that, that I would want this for. Otherwise, I, I have other uh, other computers that I use for other things. Um, so that is going to be my, my first video for my collection. Um, not really complete setup yet. There's still a lot of little things I want to be able to do to it. The PC is pretty much spot on for me. The Mac... That's pretty spot on as well. I think it's the Amiga. That's the main thing here. That'll be the thing that I'll probably do a lot of videos on. Being uh, someone that doesn't really... Uh, it hasn't really pulled apart these kind of things. Uh, PCs all the time. I used to be a Apple Mac service technician, so I used to, I can I can do them and PCs with no real problems. But the classic Amiga, I found it as a very interesting machine to pull apart. I have pulled this apart already, as you can see. Uh, it's running a dream. Everything does seem to work on it, which is great. Um, you can you can use the keyboard to move around um, in Workbench, but I really need to sort out that mouse issue. That'll probably be one of the videos I'll do. Otherwise, it's video gaming for me. Uh, thanks for watching.